Hi everyone, welcome to the release highlights of Popcorn FX 1.8. Uh, in this video we're going to take a look at some of the new stuff in version 1.8. So first of all, you can get all the effects you're going to see in this video from the online package uh, release highlights version 1.8 uh, that you see here on top of the packages when you launch uh, Popcorn FX 1.8. So you can just click that big button to download the package and then once it's downloaded it will give you the option of either create a new project from that package or import the package into an existing project you already have so here I'm just going to create a new project from it so it asks me to pick a folder so I'm just going to create a new one like release highlights I select the folder and then it will show me this window and ask me what elements in the package I want to import so here I'm just going to leave all of them checked because I want everything I click OK and then in the project list here it added release highlights 1.8 for me so first thing that has changed are the project settings so if I go there and click on the settings button it will pop the project settings window and if you already used Popcorn FX uh, 1.7 or the previous versions you'll notice that here you had the access system configuration and it's not here anymore uh, so it has gone to that new scene panel there so here you find the access system and you also have some new configuration uh, settings for audio and physics uh, so on the audio panel there you can set the sample count which is uh, basically the size of the audio spectrum that the popcorn FX editor will use uh, so you change this mainly to make it match with your uh, engine or engine integration uh, you probably don't have to worry about this if you're just testing Popcorn FX. Uh, in the physics panel there, uh, the default restitution controls uh, how much the particles will bounce off the surfaces of your backdrops. Uh, so again, this should match uh, the average values you have in your engine. For example in UE4 this would be 0.3. You don't necessarily have to do this but it will be better if you edit your effect with restitution values that match the ones uh, you will have in your engine because uh, if you tweak the effect with a restitution of for example 1 uh, to get the correct uh, look for the bounces and then you get that in your engine and the restitution all of a sudden uh, gets to 0.2 or 0.3 uh, the whole effect will not look the same at all uh, so that's mainly an addition helper uh, it doesn't get saved inside the actual effect then we have the surface types and collision filters uh, again this uh, should match what you have in your scene in your engine uh, it allows you to make some particles avoid uh, certain type of objects and not collide with uh, certain type of objects or have custom behaviors based on what kind of surface they hit uh, so this really should match what you have in your engine so that's for the project settings window I'm just going to open the project now Uh, so uh, this release highlights package also has all the previous release highlights uh, the ones we're interested in are in V18 the big feature of version 1.8 is the special layers so what is a special layer here in this effect you can see that the rising particles color themselves based on the positions of the other side going particles if we look at the tree view here we have two layers which are called listeners and tracers so the listeners are the rising particles and the tracers are the side going one and if you look here you can see a new node that wasn't there before 1.8 which is called spatial layers and here we have a single spatial layer which is named foo 
we can toggle uh, a debug display by clicking on the little eye here that allows you to visualize the, the actual storage of the special layer. And now if we unroll the listeners and the tracers, you can see in the tracers that there is a new evolver there which is named Particle Evolver Spatial Insertion. So what this evolver does is each frame it will take the positions of the particles and insert these into the spatial layer you specify here. And then once you have a populated spatial layer inside the script you can actually reference that spatial layer and query it with a position and a radius. So here these listener particles are actually asking the spatial layer how many neighbors there are in a sphere located at their uh, position and with a radius of 0.2. So if I change that with 0.5 or 0.1 or any value you can see how it affects the, the coloring and then this number of neighbors is used to change the color. So that's a very basic example of a spatial layer. Once you can query properties of particles inside spatial layers you can start doing a whole bunch of fun stuff like for example here the following particles query the color of the particles inserted into the paint spatial layer here but also query their velocities and use that to color themselves and change their own velocities which gives a kind of splashing paint curtain effect. And then you can go even further and do things like some kind of combustion effect that self-propagates So here we have a heat spatial layer and those little flame particles insert themselves into that heat layer. And all these other particles uh, can be seen as some kind of fuel particles and they query the spatial layer and when they find out that the heat is high enough they turn themselves into heat emitting particles and so it gives the kind of propagation effect. Now what makes the spatial layers really powerful is that you can make them global and share them across effects. So here this effect is a simple uh, rising column uh, and it just uh, inserts itself into an electric medium spatial layer. But if you look here there is the global property that's uh, on, that's checked. Uh, so what this does is any other effect that declares the same spatial layer named electric medium and having the same fields and the same cell size and also global uh, will share it with this effect. Uh, so you can have things like that effect here uh, where we just uh, dropped a bunch of effect backdrops so these are also new features, uh, a new feature of 1.8 uh, which allows you to, in addition to your regular backdrops like the light or the, the mesh, uh, you can add other effects to preview your effect uh, in condition with uh, other surrounding effects. So here we drop three of those uh, rising columns and that one on the background is actually rotated so I can change the orientation I want, move them where I want. And once you've set up your effect, here you'll notice the same electric medium as uh, the rising columns. And this effect uses this global layer uh, so that it treats those rising column particles as carriers for its own uh, beams. Uh, so this is pretty powerful and you can imagine having in your level uh, various uh, areas where you have those uh, kind of carrier particles 
and have uh, sci-fi or magical weapons effects that follow those carrier particles uh, to, to drive where the effect goes. Yeah, so here this one just basically uh, gets the closest uh, carrier particle, uh, shoots it into it, then when it reaches it, uh, search again for the next closest particle in front of it, etc., etc., and it gives you this kind of uh, propagating lightning thing. Oh, uh, don't worry about all these errors in the log. Uh, that's something we'll fix uh, in an upcoming release. Uh, it's nothing to worry about. It's just when we close the effects and it uh, unloads, it triggers some script rebuilds and where it shouldn't, but it really has no impact whatsoever. A new feature of 1.8 is the way you define ribbon renderers axes. So before you could only have uh, camera facing ribbons or define the surface normal of the ribbon. But now in 1.8 uh, you can actually define the side axis. So the first one is a camera aligned ribbon and you can see the nasty ribbon artifacts there. The other one is a normal aligned ribbon. So the red, uh, the red particles, these are actually capsules, uh, billboard renderers with capsule. Um, the red particles show the axis given to the ribbon renderer. Uh, so here in the two middle ones, you can see it's the, the normal of the surface of the ribbon. And the right one is the side axis here. So this is uh, extremely useful for like sword, uh, sword trails or things that have to follow uh, a segment in game that can move uh, in different ways. Another big new feature is the layer scripts. So before you only had uh, a few ways to control uh, the emission rate of layers and these were uh, either using an attribute and plugging the attribute name in that property here of the layer, flux factor expression, and or use a flux function which is basically a curve and allows you to control the, the emission rate. So this is uh, what you see here on that column. So if I change the flux function, you can see the distribution of emission changing. But this was static. Now you have what we call a layer script, which you can add by right-clicking here on the layer and you have a new layer script menu. So this layer script is like a regular particle script, except you control the properties of the layer. So here on that column there, we actually use the noise function to set the flux of the layer. So this gives us a noisy emission without having to make a, a noisy curve that repeats, repeats itself. And you can actually combine that with uh, an existing flux uh, function and all the other uh, previous ways you had to control uh, the emission rate. So the, when you assign the flux in the uh, layer script, uh, it's actually a, a scale of uh, the already uh, computed emission rate. Another thing you can do with layer scripts is control the position and orientation of each emitter. So here in this one, we write to previous position offset and position offset uh, and set that so that the emitter moves in a circle. And in addition to all this, we also change the flux with the noise. Uh, and in that one, the second one here, 
we change the previous orientation offset and orientation offset. Currently in 1.8 you have to write to both, uh, both of these. Um, in an upcoming uh, patch we will make this optional and you'll be able to only write to orientation offset and it will uh, compute the previous orientation of offset from the orientation offset of the previous frame. But currently you have to do it by hand and uh, write uh, both of these or you'll get funny artifacts with continuous spawners and stuff like that. Next up we're going to take a look at the weighted mesh sampling. Before 1.8 if you wanted to have a non-uniform distribution of particles on a mesh uh, you'd had to use rejection sampling which is basically spawning a huge amount of particles and discarding all the ones uh, that don't fit a specific condition. For example here, on this mesh, uh, the vertex colors are painted black on the feet, white on the hand, and there is a gradient on the rest of the mesh. If we want to use these vertex colors as a means to control the distribution of particles so that there are less particles spawned on the black parts of the mesh and more spawned on the white parts, then we have to generate much more particles than we, with a uniform distribution. In the spawner script, sample the vertex color generate a random number between 0 and 1 and if that random number is greater than the vertex color we just sampled then we consider this particle falls out of the uh, allowed range and we discard it and this gives us uh, the correct distribution but in the first place we have to spawn much much more particles and run the spawn script on all these extra particles even if they don't contribute to the final effect. So this was pretty wasteful. Um, here you see that to get the same number of uh, final particles uh, as with an uniform distribution, this is 12k particles, we have uh, to generate 32k particles per second instead of 10k particles per second and this is a pretty easy uh, test case as most of the mesh uh, is white or grayish. If you had a mostly black mesh with only a few bits white you'd have to like add two zeros to that count to get the, uh, the correct number. Uh, now in version 1.8 there is a neat new feature where you can tell the mesh sampler to use uh, one of the vertex color channels to actually skew its uh, spawning uh, distribution tables and this allows you to get uh, that same look with the same number of particles as the original ones. So each particle you will spawn will uh, actually get updated and will be useful. You have no uh, rejection or discarding of particles to do. Uh, so this is done in the shape sampler here. Uh, you have you have a new mesh sampling mode before you only had fast and uniform uh, fast was basically saying don't take into account the triangle surface uh, to control how much uh, particles are spawned on that triangle uniform means uh, no matter what the triangle surface is there will be a constant number of particles per unit area so this is what gives you the smoothly uniform distribution no matter what resolution uh, you have, what triangle resolution you have on your mesh. And now you have weighted distribution. So when you switch to weighted you will have all these new properties here that you can change. Uh, so the default, uh, no sorry, uh, yeah, the density color stream. So this is the the ID of the vertex color stream to be used to control density. Uh, so by default it's zero. If you have multiple vertex colors in your mesh, you set that to one, two, or whatever channel, uh, vertex color channel you want to use. And then you specify within that vertex color which of the RGBA channels you want to use as the uh, sampling distribution weight. So that's that. While we are at uh, controlling uh, emission, there is a slightly hidden new feature that allows you to treat a flux function as discrete 
keyframes at which there is a mission. Uh, so here, each keyframe of the curve uh, defines a new emission burst and the highest the keyframe the more it emits and this is controlled with that new property here flux function discrete spawn keys so when you activate that it will only take into account the, the keyframes and won't uh, do the smooth interpolation of spawn rate and finally there are a whole bunch of uh, physics related features for example, this one shows the new collision count uh, in the Physics Evolver. Uh, so now the Physics Evolver has a new property here, collision count field, uh, where you can specify uh, an int particle field. So here we have added an int collision count field. And the Physics Evolver, uh, here we, we tell it to use that field to store the number of times each particle has collided. So this allows us inside a script to detect when a collision occurred this frame. Uh, so here in that script each frame will reset the collision count to zero and we can uh, test if it's not zero uh, it's that a collision occurred this frame and here we just use that to rotate the RGB components of the color so this makes the color switch from red to green to blue to red again, etc. Then uh, we saw at the beginning of the video some uh, new things in the new scene panel of the project settings, uh, which are uh, the surface types, the physics surface types, and the collision filters, and the default restitution. Uh, so this effect here shows how you can specify different restitution for each backdrop you pull in the scene. Uh, so here I have two backdrops, the cube room and that statue here. So if you scroll down a bit, you'll see that the cube room has a restitution of node.3 and the statue has a restitution of 1, so you can see the particles bounce much more when they hit the statue than when they hit the ground. You can also use the surface types to change particle behavior uh, based on which surface uh, they intersect. So here we have an evolve script that uses uh, the new scene intersect x function. Uh, this is pretty much like the, the older scene intersect, except uh, it returns more information, uh, but it packs this information into an int4, so you have to use some unpack functions to get uh, the surface normal, the intersection distance, and the surface type. Uh, and once you get the surface type, you can compare it to any uh, surface type you specified in the project settings. So here, for example, uh, we test if the surface type is rock, then we use that inside a select to turn the particle red. And if it's metal, we use it to turn the particle bluish. Uh, and in the backdrops, we set up the statue so that its surface type is 30, which matches what we have in our project settings here you can see rock surface type rock is actually 30 um, so this will change in a, an upcoming release you ideally would want uh, to make that a drop down where you just pick surface type rock or grass or whatever you configured it uh, but currently you have to put the value directly um, and that backdrop here ground metal as a surface type of 2K, which is happens to be metal. So that's how we make the particles uh, change their behavior based on which surface they come nearby in the scene. That's it for this video. And as always, for all releases of popcorn, you can go on our wiki, wiki.popcornfx.com and get the full uh, change log of all the bug fixes, performance improvements, and the new features. 
and uh, you will also have uh, the latest uh, patches and uh, download links listed on that page. Thanks for watching.